But I just want to start off real quickly, y'all. Serious stuff, Triple. Um, I, I, this park service has been amazing. We've had amazing park services, but this year I want, I want it to be a little different. Um, back up, back up a little bit. Uh, I'm not up here like your favorite TV show on Netflix, your favorite movie. I'm not here to entertain you. So we're here to give to each other. So I, a lot of times I'm looking out and I just see. We got to give it to each other. It's not easy getting up here because y'all ain't doing it. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just, but y'all, but, but you'll look at somebody up here like this. <laughs> How, just don't be rude. Y'all got to give. This is church. Just because we're not at the brother. Well, this is church. God is here. Y'all okay. better warm that cold heart up, okay? Put it in a spiritual microwave and defrost that thing. I'm not here to entertain you, okay? I'm not here for that. Noel just gave a fire contribution to y'all like, hey, man. I'm going to get my money, Noel, okay? Come on. Dang. Now, back to the sermon. Um, no, I'm excited. I was selling the, the Kids Kingdom sir, uh, servants teachers um that the the, ser the the sermon today is saved by grace but grace is not it's not a strength of mine um at all it's actually the the one concept in my walk that in the past five years has been like a constant like i don't i don't really understand it it didn't it has it, there's been a, a disconnect the whole time until this past week on wednesday um and i'm going to share that in a little bit but grace is something that the Bible talks about constantly yeah. that God has what given us. We hear all the time that grace is unmerited favor from God. And a lot of the times I can be a very like logical person. I mean, I am emotional, but I'm like, okay, unmerited favor by God. Okay. So you get in a car accident, God pays for your car and then gives you a million dollars. Okay. Like, I'm like, that's not really real. It's hard for me to like, connect. people use that analogy a lot. And I'm like, Okay, okay, like it, it still doesn't, it still doesn't connect. Some people are like, man, that's, that's amazing. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not getting it. I'm still not, what is, what is grace? It's, it's God giving you something that you couldn't give yourself. And for being a se very self-motivated person, I'm like, what can I get myself? Like, if I want to lose weight, I change my diet, I work out, lose weight. If I want a better job, I apply, I change my resume, I get a better job. Um, you want to get married? I got married. Like, what's... What's up? <laughs> and no, and, ja and Jasmine was not, let me tell you something, Jasmine did, was like, no. Like, when I first started pursuing her, she like did not want to be my friend. And I was like, you're going to be Mrs. Peterson. Like, I like had that in my mind. Like, it was like, it was like a, I was sitting in like a telepathic force. <laughs> and then she gave me, she came out, I'm dead serious. Like, I, when I set my mind on something, like, there's like a law in the universe that like, m when if you're diligent, and you choose to just be focused, like, the, like it'll move for you. That's why there's a whole bunch of non-Christians ruling the world right now. Because they refuse to give up. And that's the kind of person I am. I'm like, I re I'm not going to give up on anything. So what, can't, what, is, what can someone give me that I can't give myself? And then, in comes the daddy issues, right? <laughs> so it's like, now I'm always trying to be worth, be worth it. I wanna, I'm always trying to <laughs> accumulate value so I can be worth the grace, so I can be worth the salvation. And, it, and I never make it and, it, and it, and it cripples me to never feel like I can measure up. Yet God wants that. God wants to me, I'm in touch with that, and God's like, but that's okay. You don't have to measure up. And I'm striving so hard to constantly measure up that issue number one. But that's what it is. And and if that's what that, that's what this struggle's been. It's me not being able to accept that I'll never be able to be enough that I'll be worth salvation. That I'm gonna be worth the grace. Because I don't because life has taught me I don't wanna ever have someone have to give me something and I have to owe them. Mm. Or, you know, or they can dangle. I'm like, no, nope. <clears throat> <laughs> not doing that. No, 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 no. I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna. You're not gonna get to tell me you did something for me. No, ma'am. I can do it myself, and I will, better than you. <laughs> yeah. And so now, but now I'm struggling with just being like, okay, like I couldn't save myself clearly. 
<laughs> Number one, but now I have to be able to allow that to transform me. And so because I, it's been a weakness in my, in my own walk with God, being able to accept it, it's been a weakness being able to give it as well. Because I push myself so hard to change and do this and do that, it's like when someone else doesn't move at the pace that I want them to move at, I can feel frustrated in my heart like, just push harder. Just try harder. Just do this. Just do that. Yeah. And so it's been this, this weakness of mine. And finally this week I've been able to, I was able to have an intellectual connection. And I, I'm, I'm excited to share now so I don't have to share from a place of like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Because when John said, I want you to preach on this, I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't know how to. Um, and I was just praying and God gave it to me. So we're going to turn our Bibles to Ephesians 2, starting in verse 8. Michael. And what I love about this scripture is that every, you know, the Bible always puts everybody on the same playing field. Yeah. So Romans six twenty three, everyone's fallen short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter how. Okay, you stole a pack of bubble gum. I killed uh, my cousin. We're on the, it, it sounds way. It sounds really bad. Yeah. The, but we're on, in God's eyes, we're on the same playing field. You yeah. can't feel better about your bubble gum. And I killed my cousin. We're on the same <laughs> on the same page in God's eyes. So in Ephesians 2 and verse 8, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Yeah. So God's like, no matter who you are, what you are, grace was given to you through faith so that no one, no one can boast. You cannot work hard enough at it. Yeah. And I was, I was meditating on this, like what was... What was a gift that I was given that I couldn't give myself? Yeah. And I was talking to my friend Monica. She was supposed to come today and I was going to shout her out, but she didn't come. She told me at 923, I'm upset. But I met her because the same place I met Stephanie was at Debbie Allen Dance Academy. And I had gone there uh, for, they have a free dance date. They have like two a year. And I went in December and I took dance class. And then they said, oh, in, a, in three more weeks, we're having another free dance day. And we'll be doing evaluations for the academy. And I went to the evaluations, I got accepted in, and the, the Debbie Allen Dance Academy is a nonprofit. So they charge individuals $600 a month to attend the academy, and you get tons and tons of classes with the most amazing teachers. If, but then I applied for a scholarship, and I was giving two thirds of a scholarship, so I had, so I had to pay $200 a month to still go there. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna figure it out. So I started going to the teachers, and I was like, hey, is it okay if I, t I, was, at, I was at the intermediate level, and I said, hey, can I start taking some of the, more of the beginner classes just to kind of catch up because I'd, I'd never really danced before. So they had a staff meeting and the teachers <laughs> came together and Miss Harris, who was the, the Dean of Administration, came up to me after one of my classes and said, Michael, like, I'd like to talk to you for a second. And I'm like, dang, what'd I do? She said, hey, uh, we, had a, we had a meeting this afternoon. All the teachers were talking about how hard you've been working and we want to give you a full scholarship. <gasps> and I, I hit the ground and I just, and I wept because it was something that I wanted so bad and I could not give myself. I didn't know how I was gonna pay. I, I had just gotten a job uh, at, the, at the Crenshaw Mall because it, it's in the same uh, plaza. Mm. And I was like, man, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be late on this payment. I have rent to pay. I have my car insurance. I don't know I don't know how I'm gonna make it happen. I literally don't have the money, but I'm here and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna do what I can do. And I, I, that, I still remember that it was after uh, my modern class and I just still remember that moment. And I tell you, after, at that moment, there was not a hard, harder working student in the whole entire dance academy on any level, ever. Because that moment that she gave me, that, that opportunity, this thing I couldn't give myself, it created an internal motivation that was nonstop. So classes started at 3.30. I was there at two, stretching. I didn't get out till nine. And then I went to the gym and I was working, I was stretching. I was working off and on the clock to prove myself, to make sure that they, this investment, this gift that they gave me, that I was gonna be, I was gonna be something because of it. I was gonna be worth this grace that she gave me. But is that your heart this morning? Are you in touch with the gift that God's given you? And does it create an internal motivation in you? Does it create you to make different choices and to, to consider things differently? Or are you kind of just sitting in your salvation and kind of just, well, I'm here. Actually, God, I'm awesome. God, God looked throughout the earth and he was like, you know what? That Janice Garcia, 
Like, Jesus is awesome, but Janice, she's the one. It's, it, that can be our heart sometimes. That we, we can almost get to a point where we feel like, yeah, God, you, you, you saved me. Like, duh. I'm, I'm me. Is that your heart this morning? Yeah. Where you feel entitled to salvation. Wow. You feel entitled to grace. God, I deserve this. I've been through a lot. You put me through a lot. Yeah, you gave me some grace. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's still a gift from God. Let's turn to the Bible to James 1, starting in verse 17. See, I love how the Bible talks about the gifts from God because it only it will not only describe what is from God, but it'll give you a description of that the gifts from God in this scripture are as it reads. In James 1, 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows so even the 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 the, the hardship in your life that became that helped you to become who you were like nisha said you the, the bible reads that in genesis 50 17 that you intended this from my harm but god intended it for my good so even the hard situations that help you to become a better person those are those are gifts from god and they're perfect gifts and they don't they don't always seem like that at the time but god knew exactly how to shift me to get me and you to where he needs us to be because if i had never gotten that uh full scholarship from the debbie on dance academy i would have three years forward never been at that cafe after the dance rehearsal where someone invited me to church I, I was actually, I didn't even make that, that connection until I was uh, preaching this lesson to Kids Kingdom. I was like, wow, if I had never gotten that gift, at the, uh, if I never got that full scholarship, I would have never gone down the road I would have gone down, which got me to connect to the same people that got me to be in that dance rehearsal, that got me to that coffee shop after the dance rehearsal that Morgan Martin invited me to Bible talking and became a disciple. So God gave me a, the gift before the gift before the gift. <laughs> which is amazing I was like wow God you you gave me gifts along the way and after the, the the first part of the dance Academy later on we have the hip the the intensives that happen in the summer where I happen to meet Stephanie and that's where and that's where we were uh, in the same class and actually just last week there's a vegan restaurant right up the street from where we meet for church and the cashiers like you look really familiar and I was like man you do too. I said, I used to go to Debbie Allen. She said, I did too. I was in the summer intensive. I was in the intermediate level. I said, I was in the intermediate level. I did I did that step with two. <laughs> I was in the intermediate level. And I said, what's your name? And I put her name in and she was in the same class with me and Stephanie. And I would have never knew who she was if I had, you know, there's like this, this build up. You got the gifts in this one, all these things leading up to it. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even have the opportunity to share what God's done in my life since meeting her. Because when I met her, I was not living a good life. And now I'm going to be like, you remember that Michael that you met eight years ago? I'm completely different. And so is Stephanie, who was in your dance class. That I would have never been in if God had never given me this amazing gift. It's mind-blowing. And I'm I, as I'm talking about it, I'm making more and more connections. It's like, man... God's grace and it was, I don't I don't know if I was just blind to it or maybe my heart was just that proud or it didn't want to it didn't want to see God's gifts in my life. I wanted to I wanted to be a self-sustaining man. I didn't want to need those things. But I, without them I would not be where I am right now. And that's what you you have to consider you have to you have to start tracing it back where would I be if this situation didn't happen that led to this that led to this and they're all just gifts from God. But the Bible says what? In, earlier in James, James 1, James 1, 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of, of your faith produces perseverance. Yeah. Yet, a lot of the times when my faith is tested, I can, I can endure, but I don't persevere. Yeah. You see, getting through something is simply enduring. It's not persevering. Persevering is when you're able to still remain joyful in the midst of that. Because you can feel like, no, I've persevered through a lot. No, 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 you endured a lot. But have you, have, you have yet to persevere. You have yet to prove faithful through it. And that's the difference. Be, being able to maintain your, your grateful heart, maintain your joy, maintain this grace 
in your life in the midst of the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. But very similarly, when things happen, I, I know how to endure. I harden up my heart, I go into my little turtle shell, and I'm ready to bop, 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 bop. <laughs> and then like, I poke my head out a little bit to see if it's close, and then if I'm happy, boom, I, I, I suck my head right back in my shell. Because that, that's my protection, I'm like, I know I can endure it, but I have I yet to persevere through it. <laughs> Point number one is God's gift will give you a lift. 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 1. Let me get an amen when you guys are there. 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 1, we're going to go all the way to 10. You guys still with me? Yeah. Amen. You guys are alive this morning. It's fantastic. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 10. It's my friend Ryan, y'all. Hey, Ryan. Here's a nice smile. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 1, the Bible reads, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and, he, and that he appeared to, appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to five, more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of all the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Can you say that you're the hardest working disciple right now in this group? No. You see, myself, I'm a hard worker, but am I a hard worker motivated by grace? Mm. I can't say I am. See, a lot of us can have the character of hard work there, yeah. but be lacking the heart. A lot of us can have the heart, but lack the character. And we have to what? We have to combine those together. Yeah. You gotta learn from me and I gotta learn from you. So how many of us here have one best friend in the kingdom? Raise your hand. At least one? Just one, just one. Just only one best one? No, friend, just one best friend in the kingdom. Raise your hand. Be honest. Raise your hand if you got two. Three, can keep them up. Four, five, six, Seven, eight. For sure, eight people. No, that's, no, that's awesome. And Janice. No, but I, I, as soon as I hit three, I, I was like, Fuck. the hands just shot down. We need each other. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying that, and I, I feel like we haven't clicked into it. And it's, <laughs> it's hard to build relationships with people that sometimes make you feel uncomfortable. People that, that get under your skin. Let's just be honest. There, you, we all have that one disciple that's like, I gotta pray an extra 15 minutes because if they come talk to me <laughs> and, they, and they say something wrong, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to just walk away. <laughs> but my, when I first became a disciple, I had I had no, there was no buffer. You was kidding. <laughs> you talk to me crazy. Um, who are you talking to? Because <laughs> it couldn't be me. I had no gr I had no grace. I had, I had no idea what that meant. And the reason you feel uncomfortable because God's calling you to learn a new level of grace and you don't want to. Yeah. You said, I actually, no, this is painful and I'm not trying to get brought for the church for snatching off somebody's wig. So I'm going to go the other way. <laughs> I, I, Y'all know I keep it real. I'm not here. I'm not. We have real life temptations in our hearts and real and real crazy thoughts. <laughs> right, okay. And we, and sometimes we just got to like. <laughs> let me just let me talk to you after communion. <laughs> it's hard, but that's why we need each other. Cause, cause sometimes you need my hard work and I need your heart. Yeah. The, hashtag my marriage. Like, dang. <laughs> Jasmine is just like 
super gracious. Sometimes I'm like, she's so patient, I get annoyed by it. <laughs> Just yell at me! Yell at me! <laughs> Just be, be mean! Be, stop being... Ugh. Like, be like me! <laughs> she will, like, refuse it. She's like... <laughs> and I'm like, God! It was so funny, the first time we dated, like, I was, like, so frustrated, and I was like, I was, I was, in my heart, I was like, just yell at me so I know you love me, like, because <laughs> that's the only thing that made sense to me, like, just, this doesn't make sense, why, this, it, did, it didn't, it didn't register, because it wasn't what I grew up with, but, and then, months later, I, after we, like, we broke up, we took a break, it broke me, because I had never seen somebody love me that way, where they were, they were unwilling, they were, they were so willing to, like, push themselves down and refuse to engage me. Like, it, it blew my mind. I wept for weeks about it. But, and, and, but that's why we need each other. Because it exposes our weaknesses. But we run from it. Paul said, I was the least of the apostles. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And it was not without effect, because now he was like, even though I'm the least, I'm also the hardest working. That's, we have to have the humility enough to know where we're at. I should not be preaching to you guys. I tell you that every single time I'm up here. I have to fight through feeling uh, like a hypocrite and feeling ashamed and kind of, and not wanting to. Because I'm like, God, like, we, we know what I did. We, you were there, I was there. And, and all of them up there with, with you. And it, and it, it can create a, a cowardice in my heart because I feel ashamed still. And I have to fight through that. But at the same time, I have a deep conviction of like, but I still, I'm gonna do what God's called me to do. So even as I say here, I'm like, I'm like pushing my feelings down and, and doing what I, what I gotta do. But that's what we have to be willing to do. We have to have the humility, like, I should not be up here with that same, in that, with that being said, I gotta do what God's called me to do, yeah. which is to work hard. Me and Jasmine had a crazy schedule this week. Up at four, sleep at eleven, or sometimes sleep at midnight. Back up at four, and what am I I'm on my breaks at work? What am I doing? I'm reaching out to people. I'm like, hey, we have house church service because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work super hard at my job and totally neglect God and God's yeah. kingdom and what He's put on my life. Yeah. So I've had to, I had to manage both. But sometimes we can get so overwhelmed with our lives and what we have <coughs> going on that we we view things for the kingdom as extracurricular. Yeah. and burdensome and like this is just too much like they're asking me too much right now mm. they as in god or they as in like what you you got you got some perspective you gotta switch up here because it's not it's not it's not people it's god yeah if, if would you would you sit there before in judgment day and tell god you were too busy no but you quit tell somebody else though mm. well you know what you're just asking too much of me mm. okay so you want to go you want to tell god you're too busy Mm. That's what we, we we get so quick to want to focus so much on who's saying something that we don't we don't view them as being a mouthpiece of God. Wow. We don't recognize the God in each other enough. Yeah. We're just like I don't like you and I don't like I don't like how you're saying it. The t your 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 voice tone is like at a five and it's like it, the, a five is disrespectful to me. So I'm just not gonna listen to you. <laughs> if next time if you come at me like like a two, I might listen. Mm. But we don't respect the, we don't respect each other enough. Yeah. Because this is just, if it, our lives, our lives, they've taught us to defend ourselves. Yeah, that yeah. if some, if you feel a certain type of way, if someone comes at you, you, you react or you defend yourself yeah. or you let them know that you can be in the parking lot 15. Like they, <laughs> there's, Amen. Yep. okay, mm -hmm. right now. you've got Vaseline in your bag right now, yeah. <laughs> no but that, that's, that's the reality of it, and we have to fight those things. Why? Because we need each other. We, we will never be a church of grace if we keep doing these things, if we keep running from the people that God's put in our lives to teach us these things. Yeah. It's hard to <coughs> administer grace. Not the first time when they say, oh, I'm sorry, you miscommunication, boom, 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 you move on. But like when it's like the 17th time. Yeah. The, the 25th time. Yeah. The 111th time. Mm. That's when it's real grace. It's not real grace when you're like, no, it's okay, bro. It's the first time you've ever done it. No, it's 
That's not grace. That's just like forgiveness. <laughs> grace is like when it's like, yo, you do this every day. <laughs> every day. And I ask you every day. I remind you. You have reminders on your phone. Every day you do this. That's when it's grace. And that's when it's super hard. Yeah. And that's when, and that's when, it's, when, it, when it transforms people. When they're in a place where you don't have to give them that. That's what transformed me. So I'm going to move on to my next point, you guys. I've been talking a lot. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, bro. Where there is grace, there is grind. Okay. Wow. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians 6, starting in verse 1. <laughs> Let me get an amen when you guys are there. One more time. 2 Corinthians 6, starting in verse 1. Alrighty, 2 Corinthians 6, the Bible reads, As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you now, it is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Turn your Bible to Proverbs 12, starting in verse 24. Real quick. Twenty-four. Amen. Proverbs twelve twenty-four. It says, "Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor." Wow. You see, after after I got that full scholarship and I was working super super hard, then we had a master class. We had a hip hop intensive before the, I met Stephanie at the summer intensive. And uh, do you guys remember making the band? Yeah. And Lori Ann Gibson, the crazy choreographer. So she came and taught a class at my dance studio. Ooh. And it was people from all over LA came. The class had like 80 people in it. And we were uh, learning the routine and people kept kicking me to the back because I was too tall. Like, Michael, you're too tall, get the back. So I'm in the corner trying to like learn these moves, all these people. And at the very end, she picked six people. And now this is a room of professionals. Like not everyone, but a lot of them were professionals. She, she calls out six people. She goes across, she says, you, 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 you. And I'm in the corner. I was like. Because <laughs> I'd only been dancing for like three months. But I was working super hard. So I go out there. One of the girls, I recognize her. She's uh, Neo. She dances for Neo, dances for Usher. Another guy dances for Usher. And then there's me. I've been dancing for three months and I'm dancing with these like real professional dancers. And she came up to me and she was like, There's <coughs> some, don't let anybody tell you that you're too, because everyone's like, you're too. I was literally a head taller than everybody else. Dancers are not that tall. Because when, when you, professional dancers, when you're on um, a TV show, movies, music videos, live performances, it, when you see it on TV, it all looks uniform, right? It all looks level. So I'm six, three and a half. So if I were to be dancing with Justin Bieber, I'm, it looks super crazy. And she was like, don't let anybody tell you that you're too, yet you're too tall, there's something in you. And she, she, she saw my hard work, but she also saw that, what got, the, this thing that God had given me. Later on, I met Monica, who was supposed to be here at uh, the summer intensive where I met Stephanie at. Trisha Miranda was another hip hop teacher and Monica was there. And uh, if you met me when I, when I first started dancing, it could have been like a simple look to the left, but if I was gonna look, it was like a look. Like every, 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 every single move had like 110% energy. It was like, um, and Monica came up to me after and she was, and in the dance world, the term fierce is like, is, is equivalent to lit right now. So if someone gives you like, yo, you're fierce, but no one had ever said that to me. And she came up to me and once again, gave me something I couldn't give myself. Confidence, right? Motivation, inspiration. And over the past eight years, these two moments, I have held on so many times. Because there's times when I just, we, we all just wanna quit. The work is too hard, we, we're working too hard and nothing's happening. 
2016, I shared my faith more than I ever have in my entire life. And I didn't finally see the fruit of it until December. But it was discouraging. Sometimes you're like, God, I, I, am, I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm praying every single day. I'm reading my Bible. I'm fasting every Monday of the week. I'm giving my contribution. It's hard. And it, it's not, it's not like, like Noel said, the farmer doesn't dig up the soil, plant a seed, cover it up, put some water, and it's like. <laughs> Like it's not, it's not, it's not gonna, it's the seed's like, bro, what? I'm a, I'm a seed. I need some time. We have to, we have to what? It's, it's this grace that teaches us what? Patience. <coughs> Enduring. Forbearing. Everything, I'm learning that everything is literally motivated by grace. Wow. All these spiritual gifts. Galatians 5.22, when it talks about the fruits of the Spirit, those are all byproducts of grace. Yeah. You can't be um, patient without being gracious. Yeah. You can't be loving without being gracious. Yeah. You can't, all these things are tied to grace, which is like, like hard for me because I'm like, dang, I can't be spiritual without being, this is my weakness. But now that I've been finally able to connect this, these moments in my life where I've literally seen the grace of God, and the emotions that come with it and what I did because of it. Now I have a, a platform like, okay, I know what I know what it is in my life now. I, I now I have a, a a start, a path that I can walk down and continue to learn and grow in. Yeah. And I've been able to see the consistency of, okay, the, I believe the grace in my life is, is Stephanie, the fruit of that. And I can't wait for Michaela to, to come to church and see that as well. It's like, these things, these gifts that God gives us along the way, whether it be a job, a spouse, all these things are going to be connected along the way. So you have to, I, want, I encourage you guys, go back to before you were a disciple and the thing that even got you to the point where someone reached out to you. Well, if, if this didn't happen, if this didn't happen, if this didn't happen, if this didn't happen, then I wouldn't be here. But all those things are, are God's grace, the, the gifts in your life. The, the, the people that put their hand down when I said uh, three, when I hit the number four, three, three friends in the kingdom. Now, how many best friends we got in the world that we still are like, yo, you going out, I'm going out. Preferably not. <laughs> but th there are, I, I still have tons, tons of my friends and our disciples that I still have relationships with, but are they like arm in arm with me we live two different lifestyles the bible says bad company corrupts good character so i have to have healthy distances because if i go to them for advice it's not going to be filtered through god through the spirit through the word it's going to be a man-made version of like low-key like satan whispering in the background i this is why we need we need tons of disciples in our lives tons of brothers tons of sisters because what if the person that's going to motivate you to work harder for Christ or teach you the heart of grace would have been that fourth or fifth person, but you don't got him in your life. Mm. So now you have a missing, a missing link, a missing chunk out of your spiritual walk because you need one more friend or two more friends. Yeah. But we get caught up in life. Who here initiated with a, uh, a disciple this, this week that they're not super close with? Okay, I don't know. Some people are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't raise your hand up, they're like, I can't see that. <laughs> so, may so maybe you thought about it. Amen. Like, I, I mean, I, I was in a dream. <laughs> well, we have to, we have to be in each other's lives. We had, and that's also what the grace of God. These relationships, I would have, I've always wanted a family. Because I came from a broken one. And now you guys are my spiritual family. This is a gift from God. This is the perfect and good gift from God. The Breath of Life House Church. <laughs> but we have to really see it that way. It's a perspective shift. Yeah. I don't know how we're feeling right now. I know I've been talking a lot. <laughs> but um, I have one more scripture to share with you guys. Come on, Michael. John 15, 16. 
And then I want to share a quote with you. John 15, 16. We all there? Yeah. John 15, 16, the Bible reads, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, <clears throat> the Father will give you. What is fruit? There's multiple fruits. There's the, the fruit of this, the fruits, not fruits. Fruit of the Spirit. So if you ain't got one, you ain't got any of them. <laughs> Hello? But there's also spiritual fruit. The fruit of souls. When it, when's the last time you worked hard to give what was given to you to somebody else? Yeah. I feel like that's a, I've asked that question a lot here. But I'm going to keep on asking it. Because this house church service is still a little, look a little, a little, a little lean. I feel like it's, it's us and, and somebody cousin. <laughs> How? When's the last time you had spiritual fruit in your life of a, of another person, another soul that transformed their life, that they were able to get into touch with the grace of God in their lives? You got, you got to really, really be in touch and want that. And you gotta be honest with yourself. If you're kind of like, do I if I do I want that? Do if and if I don't, I have to start. You have to do your own excavation of your own soul. Why don't I want to see that? Why why am I am I distant from that? Why do I kind of if you're indifferent about it? Why am I indifferent about it? Is it because I'm just so overwhelmed with what's going on in my own life? There's a quote by A. W. Towser says, "Grace will save a man." But it will not save him and his idol. Wow. I posted that three years ago. And I read that this morning and was like, ooh. What is it? Grace it says, grace will save a man, but it will not save him and his idol. Whatever is keeping you from being an awesome disciple is an idol. Whether it be a relationship, a job, money, whatever it is, you are now, you have put so much energy into it, bad or good, it's become an idol and you are worshiping at its feet. But, it's only a decision away. Yeah. I love you guys, it's a God's glory.